This PCQ28 from Lee and Lee was actually sent to me months ago, and it accidentally got buried under a pile of cases. With its factory tuning and data center DNA, an Intel 730 series SSD is an amazing choice for gamers and performance enthusiasts. Speaking of which, there's a link to our store in the video description. If you're logged into the forum, you can check that out and you can see that we're unloading some products that we used for previous videos on the cheap. So uh, definitely check that out. But anyway, I finally dug it out when I decided that I wanted to game more on my TV and I realized that my PCQ07 wouldn't fit the kind of graphics card I wanted for the best possible experience. The PCQ28 is quite a bit larger than my older case, but is still small enough to fit in the cabinet under my TV, and it comes with some updated features that make it both very easy to build in and very functional. Let's start with the outside. If you've ever seen the Lee and Lee case before, then I don't need to tell you that the fit and finish of their all aluminum cases is exceptional. And this one is no exception to the exceptionalness. Which makes it unexceptional, I guess? No, it's good though. The brushed aluminum finish is beautiful and every joint lines up perfectly. At the front, you can install a five and a quarter inch drive, and I did. I happen to own one Blu-ray, a copy of Disney's Enchanted. So if I ever feel like watching that, I wanna make sure that I'm prepared. True freaking story, not even joking about that. And other than that on the front, it's just a little Lee and Lee logo and the power button. On the right hand side, we find the front IO, two USB 3.0 ports, a headphone jack and a microphone jack. And then on the bottom, we find a filtered intake right there at the front for the front 140 millimeter fan that is gonna bring fresh air to the inside of the system. On the left hand side, we find not a whole lot of anything. And on the top, we find a 120 millimeter exhaust. At the back, well, two expansion slots, so it supports either ITX or DTX, and then power supply. So that's pretty much it. Opening up the side panel was refreshingly simple. Rather than six tiny little countersunk screws, Lee and Lee is doing a sliding system with one screw and then little plastic latches for the rest of them. Much better, much less tedious to open up and much less likely uh, to cause you to lose something. Now, the first thing I'd like to say before we get inside is that uh, I am using a personal build to showcase this chassis so some of the hardware choices might seem a little bit odd. Trust me, I know. All right, so now that it's opened up, the first thing I wanna show you is actually something that's not in there anymore, and that is this right here. These two thumb screws down here on the bottom were holding in this handy dandy bracket that accepts up to two two and a half inch or two three and a half inch drives. I don't really need internal drives because I'm using a NAS with iSCSI to install my games, so I went ahead and took this piece out in order to give my graphics card a little bit more breathing room here at the bottom. Next up, is the top hard drive cage, which I also removed to give that front 140 millimeter fan as much room to work as I could. This one accepts four three and a half inch drives with a two and a half inch drive hanging from the bottom. So that's a total of up to seven mix and match internal drives in this tiny little case. Now cable management won't be super tidy if you do decide to install all that stuff. So make sure that your expectations are reasonable. But the good news is that it doesn't have a windowed side panel so no one will ever see it. You can see what I did is I removed that. So that does give me quite a bit more cable management room although I don't have anywhere to actually route those cables to. Your power supply can be up to 170 millimeters in length but I'd recommend a little bit shorter if you're planning to use that drive cage or if you're planning to use a modular power supply. And I'd also recommend picking up a short cable kit. Silverstone has some great stuff for better cable management. I was on a budget when I first built this media PC, so I'm actually using an Antec True Power new 550 watt power supply that I actually hacked all the cables short on and then soldered them back together, re-insulated and re-sleeved them. Uh, it does improve cable management, but uh, also makes the extra six pin PCI Express cable that I had to attach for my better graphics card with its long wire on it look a little bit out of place. And really guys, that's not something that I would recommend doing. It's just something that I did for this particular uh, build. Uh, speaking of the graphics card and the connector for it, I've got an open Airflow GTX 660 Ti that doesn't quite seem to be throttling in this system, but runs at 100 degrees under load in Far Cry 3. For that reason, I would prefer a rear exhaust card, but 
This one I was able to trade Luke's friend something for, so the price was right. Um, there is lots of room in the case to install something as big as a GTX 780 Ti in there, but based on how hot this one's running, even though it is an open airflow design, I don't think that that's something that I'm going to do without modding another intake or something because that front intake does have a 140 millimeter fan behind it, but the vent is quite small. And, uh, and it's, it's definitely gonna need more airflow. I mean, uh, one option would be to take like a slim fan or even open up the bottom of the case here to get some better airflow and just throw like a, like a dust filter or something on there. And then the other thing to consider too, guys, is that your media cabinet is gonna get quite hot, especially running games with something like this inside of it. So um, but even now I'm gonna have to get like a 120 millimeter hole saw, cut some holes and then get some, get some airflow going on in there as well. If we take out the four thumb screws at the back, we can slide the power supply back which allows us to see the Gigabyte Z87 ITX motherboard that I've got installed in here. The CPU in there is a Core i5-4570 non-K. It runs at about 70 degrees in my gaming load scenario in Far Cry 3, and 75 degrees max running Prime 95 small FFT with the random Silent X cooler that I have on there. I'm actually happy with those results. I turned the fan around so that it feeds directly into the power supply for exhaust, but I would definitely recommend using a thermal probe to ensure that your motherboard VRM temps are still okay before doing something like that in your own system. Normally, your motherboard should want to benefit from the downdraft airflow that's coming from your CPU fan. The front connectors in the system, I don't know if you'll be able to see this very clearly, but that USB 3 one in particular is pretty taut. The, the other ones were okay, but there's more strain on that USB 3 connector than I would have liked. This is an unusual spot on this motherboard for the front header for USB 3. Um, and the front ports do work, but another inch would have made a really big difference. Uh, with the power supply popped out, you can also see my my super ghetto uh, cable cutting job here and how short the cables are on this power supply. Again, I don't really recommend doing that. So if we take off the other side panel, you can see that behind the motherboard tray, we find a very limited amount of space for cable management. And we also find uh, my boot drive. It's a 1.8 inch 64 gig SSD from Kingston. Uh, this freed up some space for me in the front for better airflow, which I desperately need, given that you saw my GPU temperatures. And since I don't really need any storage in this machine, 64 gigs is lots for my OS and like the four internet browsers that I need to have running at all times. So in conclusion, overall I really like this case. I'm happy with it, but I went in knowing that I was trading proper ventilation for physical beauty. Don't expect to fill the PCQ28 up with everything that you can physically pack inside and have it function. Seven drives plus like a graphics card, and, and it should be noted that if you do install drives on this bottom sled here, you're not gonna be able to install a double slot graphics card. So even five drives plus that graphics card, it's just not enough ventilation and you would have to make some alterations to make that happen. So with that said, I've definitely still got some work to do on this build, but I don't really think it's fair to review the case after I've modded it. So I think we're pretty much done here. Guys, like and share this video if you liked it, it helps us out a lot. Dislike it if you disliked it, and leave a comment on the Linus Tech Tips forum linked in the video description if you wanna discuss this product with the other members of our community, or if you have any constructive criticism for me and my team. Also linked in the video description is our support link with options to buy cool t-shirts, give us a monthly contribution, or even just give us a kickback whenever you buy random junk on amazon.com or .de or dot wherever it is that you happen to be. So check that out if you enjoy our videos. It helps us out a whole bunch. Oh, and as always, guys, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.